So now, Im Sung Joon, first I would like to remind also that you also had a very uh, distinguished uh, career in the diplomatic service of your country, in particular as, well as a national security advisor. So we have very experienced uh, personalities with us uh, this morning. I would like also to remind that you are one uh, of the uh, friends of the WPC of the longest uh, standing and I remember our discussion in a hotel in Seoul uh, in early, uh, I think in 2007, when we discussed this project and you were one of the very first uh, uh, to uh, support uh, this. So thank you very much for everything. And now uh, your views on this Indo-Pacific concept that Korea, South Korea joined lately with uh, some uh, a lot of uh, hesitations, and perhaps uh, since uh, time is short, perhaps also you could add uh, some remarks on a more uh, immediate uh, uh, issue, uh, which is the latest uh, developments in North Korea and the, and the way uh, they uh, uh, affect or are perceived <coughs> in, in your country. Please. Thank you, Thierry, for remembering me as one of the old uh, friend of this. I didn't uh, say WPC. old. I say for the longest standing. <laughs> longest. <laughs> well, um, I'm very happy to be back to WPC. Uh, in three years, uh, I was unable to make it uh, because of all the uh, pandemic-related uh, restrictions. Uh, but uh, it's great uh, to be here. And um, well, about the topic uh, we are taking up uh, in this session. Uh, in the Pacific and its relevance. I mean, uh, uh, so I focused on uh, its relevance to the Korean Peninsula and to my country. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, Korea is an uh, the pacific country, and, um, uh, but uh, we have to admit that uh, this idea of uh, Indo-Pacific uh, framework uh, was, I mean, uh, first floated by Japan and later the United States. So uh, I want to take a practical uh, approach, I mean, to understand and uh, uh, trying to explain where is uh, the Korea's position vis-a-vis uh, -vis in the Pacific uh, strategy. Well, Indo-Pacific as a strategic concept was floated uh, more than a decade ago. Um, however, it gained global attention only after U.S. President Trump referred to the free and open Indo-Pacific during his visit to Asia. Soon after that, uh, U.S. administration officially replaced the Asia-Pacific, which is very familiar in all the Asian countries, but uh, with Indo-Pacific to describe the U.S. strategic sphere across Asia. The U.S. free and open Indo-Pacific is a nutshell, a manifestation of a hegemonic competition with China. We cannot, you know, we have to admit, I mean, this as preposition uh, for the Indo-Pacific strategy. And the geopolitical scheme to counterbalance China, uh, which has been extending its influence over wide region uh, with its rising military and economic uh, capabilities. U.S. was very much concerned about Chinese uh, building a sphere of influence from the Eastern China Sea uh, to the Indian Ocean thereby restricting U.S. global power projection and leadership in the international system over the longer term. After that, the U.S. has moved its strategic pivot westward from the Asia-Pacific to include India and the Indian Ocean Rim. And finally, it modified its military doctrine to rename the U.S. Pacific Command as the U.S. Indo-Pacific command. Biden administration, uh, which uh, denied 
everything uh, made by Trump, but uh, they inherited, I mean, his uh, policy of Indo-Pacific strategy and uh, released Indo-Pacific strategy report in February uh, this year. From the beginning, the U.S. considered South Korea, Japan, Australia, and India as key allies in its efforts of pushing forward the IPS. But uh, Korea uh, was not in the first uh, you know, uh, membership, and we delayed I mean, joining uh, the Indo-Pacific framework proposed by the U.S. administration. Well, uh, there are now three pillars, as uh, our participants I mean, mentioned. Um, Quad, well, I thought, I mean, Korea was, you know, uh, well, in earlier stage, a member of uh, Quad, but uh, somehow of the Korean uh, domestic <coughs> political situation and the Korean peninsula security situation, uh, we could not join the Quad at an early stage. And uh, AUKUS is not, you know, Asian. Uh, it involves the UK uh, in counterbalance China. And um, because, I mean, you know, we, we talked about what is the components of Indo-Pacific strategy? Is it security or economy? Well, I agree that, uh, you know, uh, security size is more than economic side. So uh, many Asian countries are I mean, reluctant to join uh, directly, I mean, the U.S.-led IPS. So uh, President Biden, you know, proposed an economic uh, basket, I mean, to uh, include, I mean, you know, uh, some lingering uh, Asian nations uh, as called IPEF, economic you know, uh, in the Pacific Economic Framework. Korea uh, joined the IPF already, uh, but Korea's uh, full uh, policy of uh, Indo-Pacific strategy has yet to come. Uh, well, they are preparing uh, to announce maybe by the end of this year. Uh, so I'd like to, uh, you know, explain why Korea has delayed its membership uh, with IPS. Well, South Korea's hesitation was due to its preoccupation with North Korea, uh, mostly the nuclear issue. The foreign and security policy of South Korea has been always set on inter-Korean issues, especially in the pro-North Korean uh, you know, administrations uh, in Korea. Second, the U.S. FOIP was formulated to target the rise of China. Therefore, supporting the U.S. FOIP would complicate South Korea's relations with China. Now its top trading partner. Well, we have normalized uh, relations with uh, China over the th three decades. Uh, we have, uh, well, as uh, many countries you know, regard China as number one trading partner, including uh, South Korea. We have over 300 million, uh, 300 billion, uh, you know, uh, trade with uh, China. And uh, China is a long time stakeholder in the inter-Korean relations. As long as South Korea's foreign policy revolves around North Korea and inter-Korean issues, South Korea cannot afford to antagonize China. So it delayed uh, Korea's membership. And third, President Moon, taking office in uh, 2017, uh, embarked on a new Korean, South Korean diplomatic initiative called the New Southern Policy. Uh, we want to advance to the uh, ASEAN uh, region so uh, Korea has been very active in providing the development assistance for uh, all the ASEAN countries. So we want to get beyond the Korean Peninsula, uh, reaching uh, you know, uh, the ASEAN uh, area. So 
It could be called the Korean version of the Indo-Pacific strategy. By doing so, South Korea managed to secure secure autonomy and non-military engagement with the IPS. But uh, after uh, Biden took over uh, the U.S. administration, South Korea's stance on the Indo-Pacific started to change. Uh, This year, we had a conservative uh, government led by President Yoon Suk-yeol sworn in, and uh, South Korea participated in the first quad-plus meeting along with uh, New Zealand and Vietnam. A more noticeable shift in South Korea came uh, during the Washington summit between President Moon uh, and President Biden in May 2021. In the later uh, presidency of uh, President Moon's administration, uh, began to realize that Uh, President Biden's foreign policy was single-mindedly focused on maintaining U.S. dominance over China and rallying its allies and partners around the anti-China network. If South Korea is isolated further, it would uh, face the risk of damaging South Korea's inter-Korean relations, including the denuclearization of North Korea and U.S. indifference to South Korea's policy. So uh, President Moon also began to move toward uh, align South Korea with the U.S. in the Pacific strategy. But the election of President Yoon only this year took a dramatic turn in shaping South Korea's uh, future in the Pacific strategy. President Yoon, a conservative party candidate, vowed to strengthen U.S.-Korea alliance relationship and reset China-Korea relationship, criticizing the uh, the previous administration for its lukewarm stances against China's cruelty during the election campaign. When uh, there was a tension uh, running very high on the Korean Peninsula around uh, 2017, Uh, the U.S. and South Korea decided to deploy THAAD batteries uh, on the soil of the Korean Peninsula, uh, which led a strong reaction from uh, China. And China, well, uh, gave us some sanctions, I mean, three points. So, you know, Korea-China relationship really, I mean, uh, strained. And now we are uh, still, I mean, uh, under difficult situation in handling uh, China-Korea relationship. So uh, this is uh, why Korea delayed, I mean, uh, you know, being a a member of the uh, Indo-Pacific Partnership. So I I want to stop here for the time being. Thank you very much, uh, Sun Jun. So... Let me say briefly how I perceive this uh, part of uh, our session. I think that uh, this concept of Indo-Pacific reflects a kind of uh, very subtle, uh, but also unstable, implicit equilibrium. And uh, the problem is uh, that uh, no as in my understanding, no country, particularly in Southeast Asia, wants uh, to take sides uh, too clearly, too openly, uh, in uh, vis-à-vis the uh, U.S.-China uh, rivalry. But since the whole construct is highly unstable, uh, at any point something could happen that would in fact force some countries uh, to take sides. Maybe not all. India, I think, has a very special role because India is becoming a giant. Uh, 
So, uh, as the current uh, Indian foreign minister says almost every day, he uh, is uh, proud, uh, India is proud of uh, her civilization and uh, intends to uh, make their own choices by themselves. They don't want to be imposed uh, any kind of uh, strategy from outside for uh, Japan, uh, Korea, uh, the situation is much more, m m much more complex. The, the margin of maneuvers is much, much more limited. So um, I, I think we are talking about a very unstable uh, uh, situation, which is not surprising because the whole world is unstable today.